Moving to Australia is a massive culture shock, even for people moving from countries that already speak English. You'll soon realise in Australia that everything might look the same, but it's all very different. And no, it's not upside down. <laughs> Shit joke. Australia can be better, and it can be worse. But to help you assimilate into your new life down under faster, these are the things that foreigners don't understand about Australia until they get here. G'day guys, my name's Ross, and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic. Australia is a lot bigger than you think. Foreigners will never truly appreciate how big Australia is until they experience traveling it for themselves. In fact, I even feel sorry for people that move to Perth. You just arrive rather than having to spend about another five hours just flying across the country. Australia is the sixth largest country in the world by area, almost as large as the United States, they'll probably be crowing about that one, and much bigger than Europe. So small. Except if you kind of count Russia. Do we count Russia and Europe anymore? <laughs> I've angered Putin. There is either a big distance or a f***ing huge distance between the major cities in each state. Those are the only two choices. And it can either take several hours or more than a day just to drive between them. How long have you ever sat in a car for? Long travel times are just accepted in Australia. So get used to road trips as your new thing to do. Or if you're an impatient post-millennial, just take a flight. No, that's not fair. Old people can be impatient too. Things just aren't round the corner anymore. Even the shops. I mean, if you live in one of the big cities, then you probably won't notice this too much. But even in the burbs, properties are just much more spread out. And that round the corner trip to the shops, or the cheeky schooner in the pub, could mean that you might need to take the car and drive. But don't drink and drive. If you have my luck, then you'll probably get stopped for an RBT. Don't worry. Some pubs or taverns or RSLs might even put on a courtesy bus for you to get you home safely in your drunken stupor. Particularly if you love to play the pokies and you just lost all of your money to them. Aussies love a punt. You probably won't mind going to the doctor in Australia. Australia has a public healthcare system that's probably better than the one in the country that you've just come from. First off, Medicare is pretty much free. Don't get pedantic about taxes, but it basically means that all Australians and permanent residents have access to free or heavily subsidized medical treatment, including doctor's appointments, hospital visits, and some prescription medicines. Medicare also covers some allied health services, such as physiotherapy, podiatry, and psychology, all the P's. This can be a huge relief for those who need ongoing care for chronic health conditions. So you won't get any Walter Whites in Australia doing naughty things just to pay for their treatment. They'll just do that for the vibes. <laughs> vibe. That doesn't sound cool when I say vibes. And lastly, the Australian healthcare system places a strong emphasis on preventative healthcare, with regular checkups and screenings available for all, if you're a citizen or a permanent resident. In fact, seeing a doctor here is much easier than other free healthcare systems in other parts of the world, like the NHS. Now I love the NHS, but it's underfunded and under-resourced. I'm not saying Medicare's perfect, and it's never a bad investment for any government to invest more money into healthcare, but at least here, I don't actively avoid going to see the doctor because I know the wait time is gonna be horrendous. At least here I can actually see my doctor. Public transport is different. I mean, they still use buses and trains and stuff, but this one really varies in comparison to where you originally came from, both for the positive and the negative. If you come from America, then I would say that the whole public transport system is quite good. It's mostly clean, safe, apart from the odd eche. I mean, I've never had any problems. It's not overcrowded. No one's having to push you onto trains. Or you don't need to sit on the top. Most of the time you can get a seat and it's pretty affordable. Especially now with the cost of fuel, most of the time traveling on public transport is gonna be cheaper than using your own car. And better for the environment too. But is it gonna save you time? Um, maybe not. Because that's assuming that it gets you to exactly where you wanna go at the time you wanna get there. Public transport in Australia at times can be quite limited, especially outside of the major cities. Bus networks don't always link up the best with train or tram networks, or if it does, it can sometimes be infrequent. So you better make that connection or hope that your phone has enough battery to keep you entertained through the wait. But at least you have choice. And on the whole, it seems that public transport in Australia is trying to be made better rather than being underfunded and just made worse. The immigration process in Australia is complicated and lengthy. Are you looking at starting the process? When I started doing it for my family nearly five years ago, to be honest, 
I didn't know where to start. What's the difference between an expression of interest and actually being able to apply? How do I know if my occupation is even on the skills list? What information do I need to provide to the Australian government to prove that I'm not a worthless sponger and I'll be able to actively contribute to the Australian economy and just get on with living my best life down under? The truth is that for some people, the process is incredibly easy. For some, the forms are simple. Well, not for me. I'm lazy. So if like me, your life is already busy enough that you can't afford to add in any additional worries, that's my way of saying I'm lazy, or at least that's how I justify it to myself, or your life situation is already so complicated that completing the whole application process just seems unmanageable, what do you mean I have to list every country I've been to in the last 10 years, including every member of my family? Then speak to True Blue Migration Services. Mention us and they will tell you for free your best options for moving to Australia, with no obligation. It doesn't get much better than that. And then if you do come to the realisation that they can help you to speed up the process and reduce the complications like some kind of super fast resettlement secretary, then they might be the reason why you get to live out your life as a slightly confused foreigner sooner rather than later. Australia is a dry country. No, I don't mean alcohol. God, can you imagine that? With summers as hot as they are in Australia, I don't know how I could get through with two kids and not being able to enjoy a nice cold beer. But a concept that was alien to me coming from dull, dreary and rainy England. I mean, the sun does shine sometimes, but it was the importance of water conservation. How many of you even have the faintest idea of how much water you use each day? Does it even matter how much you use where you come from? Well, in Australia, they often have two water rates, one for normal use and then the super high one if you want to go over your daily allowance. Sure, you can use more water, but you'll bloody pay for it. Some don't even have that luxury. You'll often see houses with huge rainwater tanks. That's all their water. Love having a a power shower? Well, it better have a flow rate of less than nine litres per minute or less. That's the law. To be fair, water conservation is a global issue. We've just probably been spoiled by our previous countries, allowing us to use however much water we want, whenever we want. That's not real life, my friend. So if you love to run through the sprinklers in your spare time, or use the full flush when all you've done is have a wee, you better have a rainwater tank. And if you don't like governments telling you what to do, even when there's some science behind their policies, then maybe stay where you are, champ. You keep being free, okay? Australia has one of the oldest and youngest cultures in the world. Australia's indigenous culture is rich and diverse and can often be overlooked by many foreigners, or sometimes even some Australians. Coming from the UK where British culture is often celebrated, but not necessarily conducted on a daily basis, it can seem a bit weird when someone pays their respects to indigenous cultures when publicly speaking. Even taking part in your first welcome to country or smoking ceremony can seem a bit weird. And yes, a smoking ceremony isn't necessarily what you're thinking. Don't be scared to be curious and want to learn about more than 40,000 years of culture and tradition that is far flung from how we currently live our lives. Modern Australian culture can also seem alien to many foreigners at times too, especially coming from countries that are so densely urbanised and developed. Australia is such a beautiful country, and as a foreigner you'll feel compelled to want to go and explore more of it. So just get out there and do it. No, you're not going to be stalked by some kind of dangerous animal wanting to kill you, unless you're kind of within four metres of water further up north. Oh, and do watch out for drop bears. But as long as you stick to the trail, bushwalking and hiking are popular recreational activities, and are more likely to cleanse your soul and improve your health than end up with you having a punch on with a kangaroo. But genuinely watch out for magpies though. If you don't feed them or you look away, they're gonna get you. But probably the secret weapon of all Australian culture is mateship, and you can use this to your advantage. While all countries have mates, mateship is a special and unique part of Australian culture that celebrates loyalty, support, and friendship. When you're missing home and feeling a little bit lost, Australian mateship can help you feel like you belong in your new community. Your new Aussie mates will be there for you, and lend you a helping hand, and give you a listening ear, probably over a nice cold beer or a cheeky vino. Or both. <laughs> Spoil yourself. You're also allowed to not drink. Not all Australians are raging alcoholics. With new Aussie mates by your side, you'll be able to navigate your new way of life with confidence. So just get out there and make new friends. You won't be rejected. That's un-Australian. You might even find some new forever friends. And if you're still worried about moving to Australia, this video is going to help you out too. Catch you later.